This video sucks to make. Um, it might seem like this is coming out of the blue, but it isn't. This is something I have been planning on for a while, but it still sucks. There are some things to unpack here, um, which is why this is such a long video. I want to take my time and do it right, explain everything fully which is why I have, I have lots of stuff written out, so I apologize if I look away a lot, and also for the construction noises around my apartment. The first thing I want to say is that this is not me quitting YouTube, or I would have just made the title Quitting YouTube or something. I'm actually stopping dubs because I want to continue doing YouTube, which is a weird sentence. Seems like an oxymoron, since making dubs is what put me on the map it's what people know me for. While I am excited about what I'm going to do next, I'm not excited about stopping dubs. The whole thing is a messy situation. It's not very simple, and overall it sucks. I want to explain everything as best I can. First off, a little context to help explain things. About five months ago, I made a post in my community tab about how I had fallen out of love with speech dubs. Not music dubs, the ones where I take an existing song and reharmonize and add a bunch of stuff to it, but speech dubs, the ones where I hit every syllable of speech and or sound effects. Making those kinds of dubs had started to feel like a music theory exercise rather than a cool video that I got to make. They just became homework. Watching my old piano dubs, I still enjoy them a lot. They have this weird niche magic about them. But I just don't enjoy making them anymore. And I didn't five months ago, so I stopped. Outside of a couple brief phases where I was making them again, I haven't made them. And those brief phases were not necessarily what I wanted to be doing. They were triggered by outside influences, and I made more dubs because I knew that's what would be well received. So speech dubs have been on their way out for some time. But music dubs haven't been. They've still been going strong, they've been getting bigger and better, and I still love making them, which brings me to the point of this video. I stopped making speech dubs because I was creatively dissatisfied. But I'm not with music dubs. So why am I stopping? There are two reasons, and both of them are because of copyright laws. If you want to break this video down into one undiluted statement, it's this. I am not stopping dubs because I don't enjoy making them. I am stopping them because I am being actively punished for making them, and I am afraid of legal reprisal. Now I will try and explain both of those points more fully. Reason number one is the punishing. It is immediate and impactful. It has to do with copyright claims, which recognize copyrighted material as being played in a video. Depending on what the owner of that copyrighted material has decreed, several things can happen. Um, the video can stay up, but the copyright owner takes 50% or 100% of ad revenue. Um, the video stays up, but monetization is completely disabled, so no one gets anything. Or they can ask me to take the video down, either nicely or not nicely. The worst example of this was a long time ago when I made a piano dub of a Bo Burnham bit. YouTube emailed me on behalf of Netflix, which owns all the Bo Burnham stuff, and told me to take the video down, delete it, or I would get a strike on my account. Three strikes and you're off YouTube. At the time of making this, I've uploaded around 550 videos. 209 of those are dubs. And between all my videos, I have 127 copyright claims. Although some of those claims are on my covers of songs, almost all of them are on dubs. About half of all of my dubs have been claimed for copyright. And what that boils down to at its core for me is thousands of dollars that I have not made. 
that is a, a real problem. I live well below the Canadian poverty line, being a full-time musician, and I knew to expect that. Like, of course, of course. So whatever, that's fine. But the problem is that I just can't take a hit like that. 127 videos not monetized is a really devastating hit to me. And as long as I continue to make dubs, that will keep happening. I want to point out two recent examples to really drive this point home and highlight certain details of how dubs have interacted with copyright over my years on YouTube. At the start of August, Jack's Films, Jack Douglas, shouted me out in one of his videos called the Content Awards, in which he awarded me for making cool videos. That's incredible. I was and am so thankful. To be recognized like that for me is really impactful. It really resonated with me. And then from a mechanical standpoint, my subscriber count rocketed up. I had tons of views. I had my biggest month on YouTube ever in August of 2019. To celebrate, I made a piano dub of Jack giving me the award. That piano dub was claimed for copyright, and monetization of it was killed completely. Which is ironic, I guess. A video where I'm literally being complimented for my content is deemed to not play by YouTube's rules. The claim was made by Fullscreen, which is Jack's multi-channel network that he's a part of. And the claim happened automatically, as soon as I posted the video. Jack probably doesn't even realize that the claim happened. So yes, I could contact him and ask him to ask Fullscreen to relent. There's a lot of ifs in that sentence, and the bigger thing is time. Even if I had messaged him as soon as I got the claim, how long would it take to get resolved? Because if it's more than like two days, the video will have gotten most of the views it's going to get. So the damage is already done. Second example, I've recently been dubbing Captain Sparkle's Minecraft songs. First Revenge, and then Fallen Kingdom, and then Take Back the Night was the most recent one. I spent an entire week working on Take Back the Night, and then I uploaded it, and Try Hard Ninja, who made the music, his record label claimed my dub. So I put in 40 to 50 hours on that project and earned zero dollars from it. That week is not wasted. I'm never wasting time when I'm making music, I believe, because it's what I love to do. But I can't work for no pay. I have bills, I have an apartment, and a digestive system that relentlessly demands calories. I picked these examples because it's easy to imagine that the companies that auto-claim videos like Dubs are these big faceless corporations, like Fox, who auto-claim all of my Simpsons Dubs. Claims are made by most companies and individuals, and those claims cover content from YouTube creators, from the internet at large, like from everywhere. My piano dub of the back at it again at Krispy Kreme four second clip or whatever, that got claimed for copyright. So my point with this is that you might be saying, Finn, just don't dub material that is obviously copyrighted by a big company. And my answer is that nothing is safe. When I make a dub, I have no idea if it's going to get claimed for copyright when I post it. And the only way for me to figure that out is to actually post it. So I have to make the whole video first and put in all that effort and then roll the dice and find out if I get paid. At that point, I'm gonna post the video anyways. There's no point not to, I just don't earn anything from it. This is really stressful for me. And the more popular I get, the more quickly my videos get claimed and the more of them get claimed. My, I'm getting, I'm starting to get claims going way back. My Dr. Zayas piano dub, one of the very first ones, it was posted at the end of 2017. It got claimed a couple months ago. So 
people are looking for them and finding them. I want to take a second here and really say that I'm not villainizing people like Igor, Try Hard Ninja, or Jack from Jack's Films. They work hard to make their content, and they should be paid fairly for it. But I do, too. The system just isn't on my side. You could argue in my defense and say that my dubs should fall under fair use law or parody law or whatever, that they are transformative, that they change the original content into something new and interesting and original. That's how I've always viewed it. For me, it's never piggybacking on success. Although admittedly, like let's come clean here, that's a big part of how I've chosen dubs or, or what drives views. This is topical, you know, a topical meme, of course. But for me, it's about transforming that thing into something new, something cool and exciting. But from a legal perspective, dubs are by their very nature non-transformative. When I make a dub, I don't actually change the original material at all. I'm not remixing it, I'm not chopping it up, moving things around, I'm not just using little sampled bits. I am just using an entire uninterrupted clip of a TV show or a video or whatever, and it plays all the video and the audio, more or less unchanged, except for like little crops or EQing, and then I monetize it. There are instruments and my voice and other things playing on top of the original, but the original is unchanged. So I can't get around that fact. I have no legal defense. I can't contest any claims I get. How could I possibly? I believe that my dubs are transformative as much as any remix and that they should fall under fair use or parody law. I would take whatever I can get, but they don't. And that's why I get so many copyright claims. If money weren't an issue for me, then this point I could maybe work with. Some of you watching this are extremely generous Patreon supporters, or you've donated during live streams, and I appreciate it more than you know. I really do. It's incredible to me that you do that at all, or even that you watch my videos without ad block on. But where I am right now financially, that support is just not enough to offset these claims or for me to be able to afford to ignore them. So income loss is reason number one as to why I will no longer be making dubs. Reason number two is a little more nebulous and kind of unsure, but for that reason it's um, scarier to me. And that reason is fear of legal reprisal. I am afraid that one day I will go into my inbox, my email, and I will just be looking at Armageddon. I fear that one day Fox or one of these companies whose material I have been monetizing will really come after me. At some point, I fear that them claiming all of my stuff with whatever algorithm they use is not going to be enough. And they're going to say, okay, you can't distribute this material anymore, even if you're adding stuff on top. My entire channel is a walking lawsuit. And I have no defense if anyone decides to call me on it. I think the reason I've been able to get away with making dubs so long with no more than uh, we're taking your money and a slap on the wrist sort of deal is that no one's really noticed me. I'm not a very popular channel, but I want to be someday. I recently passed 75,000 subscribers. How long can I stay under the radar, really? How long until the views on dubs and the success they theoretically have in this possible future makes me worth coming after. It shouldn't be weird to want to be successful as a creator, to want people to notice your content. But I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid that if I hit a threshold of success, 
then suddenly the hammer is going to come down on me. Imagine a YouTube channel with a million subscribers. And imagine that in every video, they used copyrighted material without asking the copyright owner, and they monetized their videos. They would get obliterated. Of course, of course they would. And that's what I'm doing. Just no one cares enough yet. So those are the two reasons. I wish things were different. I wish that, you know, I feel like I am an artist, which is a pretentious sentence, no matter how you say it. But what I mean by that is that I wish I only had to worry about the creative part of things. That if I could just make music and not worry about this stuff, that's what I wish for. I wish that making dubs wasn't this nebulous legal area which stripped me of income. And I wish that my content, I wish that dubs were as fairly received as any other original content on YouTube. But none of those things are true. So, I am not gonna hang around in a pity party. I am going to adapt and survive. Or this video single-handedly kills my channel. <sighs> I want to end this whole part of the video by reassuring you in that I am not going to remove any of the dubs from my channel. If that Armageddon never comes, then the videos will stay up forever, and I hope they do. I hope they're not a problem outside of the problems that they already are, but the future of this channel does not include dubs. And that brings us to the future of this channel, which is a much happier topic. This channel has constantly changed and evolved. Before I was doing dubs at all, I was uploading piano covers and improv, full covers and all kinds of weird videos. And then piano dubs of speech, and then piano dubs of music, full band dubs of speech, full band dubs of music, silly songs, musical sketches, let's write a story, all my original music, write me a song, that one time I tried to be a music video critic. It's a lot of stuff, and I don't regret doing any of it. But doing all kinds of different content is generally really bad for a channel. When people subscribe to a channel, they want to know what they're getting or at least like a genre of content, and I've never done that. All my stuff has been linked by music, but only kind of loosely, it feels like. I've always had weird ideas on the go, and you never know what you're going to get next. That's appealing in its own way, but it hasn't been good for this channel. If you subscribe to me for Write Me a Song, and then my next three videos are two dubs and a cover song, you'll probably unsubscribe, and I don't blame you. That makes total sense. I have done that to channels I've subscribed to. We're all here to be entertained. So I want to get consistent. I want to do one thing, and I want to do it well. I want people to be excited when a new video comes out and not disappointed. And there is definite disappointment. Every time I upload a new video at the moment, I lose subscribers. Every single time. And I think it's because people have subscribed to me for one thing, and I keep not making that one thing. Right now, I want to focus on one thing, and that thing is write me a song. I really love it. It's so freeing. I get to involve all of the people who watch. Um, I get to make original music. Importantly, it's unable to be claimed for copyright because it's all original. It really checks all the boxes. In terms of future videos on this channel, I'm really just going to stick to making Write Me a Song. So when you subscribe to me, you know what you're getting, and you're excited every time there's a new video. There are special events that will be exceptions to this. When I make new original music, it'll come out here. And I have, for example, a secret project I've been working on since April that's nearly done. So that'll come out on the channel, and it's not Write Me a Song, but in general, Write Me a Song is now the content I make. Now, those of you who tune in every Friday night at 9pm, have no fear. 
the late night piano live streams will continue. I love them very much. Of course, they are going on. For those of you who don't know, I live stream some relaxing piano tunes every Friday night at 9 p.m. EST. And then when the streams are done, they all get uploaded in full to my second channel, Finn Was Streaming. And that's it for the whole channel plan. It's a very simple one. And for that reason, I hope it's a good one. This is a time of mixed feelings for me. I am very excited about not having to stress about copyright and about getting paid. But I still love music dubs. And if the rules were friendlier towards them, I would still be making them and this video would not exist. I hope very much that you'll stick around. But you know, I get it if you don't. I bear no grudges if you leave because you're not interested in my work if it's not dubs. Of course. Like I said, we're all here to be entertained. So don't feel guilty about unsubscribing. But I will say that if dubs are what you want to see, there are other people making them. And there are more people making them now than I think there have ever been. Charles Cornell is the big name right now. He really hit the mainstream. But Steve Badak, David Dockery, um, you can just search for dubs and things will pop up. Not everyone calls them dubs, so you might have to do a little searching, but other people are doing them now. And some of these people have sent their dubs to me saying, check this out. You inspired me to start making dubs. And to me, that is mind blowing. How cool is that to have had that effect for people? I feel like a pioneer in a weird niche corner of the internet. It's so cool. So there are lots of dubs out there to enjoy. And if that's what you want to see, then go and watch them. And if you want to help write some goofy songs and enjoy some late night piano, then I'm your guy. Peace out.